Nigeria ranks fourth on the World Bank borrowers list. Salis tells Tinubu to go after barons responsible for bunkering. Those will be our hot topics, but we'll be looking also at the headlines on Off the Press this morning. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's always a pleasure knowing that you are there and a part of this show. Uh, we do hope that you are going to get to your uh, workplace, uh, wherever you, you work and put food on your table. Uh, we hope that you are going to arrive there safely. Now the roads are a bit free and you can take a journey that used to take hours, sometimes days, you take them in uh, 10 minutes. I remember someone was telling me this morning that he came from Ibafo to Bega and it took just 10 minutes. And um, after that, he got to um, Yanowuru and that was in 20 minutes. And I remember a time <laughs> that in our lives sometimes uh, that we used to travel that road like you're going for um, a vacation to America or Europe or something. Someone will take a flight from Nigeria to, to the UK and will arrive at the UK and you're still struggling to get from Bega or Jodu Bega to Ibafo or Mowe. Uh, it was crazy. But we thank God for small mercies. And this is not just like some people would say because the fuel is no longer there. People cannot afford it. That's why the cars are not on the roads. But the roads are relatively very, very free and good. Uh, those blockades that used to uh, be on the roads because they were working on the roads are no longer there. So we thank God, like I said, for small mercies. And I, I said it the other day that I was trying to give um, information about how we travel in Lagos State and the person was just laughing at me, the person who lives in Abuja was just laughing at me that I'm trying to paint a picture of how it happens everywhere else, maybe in Europe, in America or some other developed countries because what I was saying was not true. And these are the things I mentioned. I'm saying this because sometimes when we when we rain down abuses and curses on the government because they're not doing much, we should also have a moment and look inwards and see what has been done right or at least is tolerable enough or done better than uh, we find them anywhere else. So I told the person that in Lagos you have um, a lot of options when you want to take a ride somewhere. You can go to the bus stop uh, or the park, take a yellow bus if you want. You can hail a cab because it is possible to hail a cab here uh, in Lagos. You can also take BRT which is uh, the government-owned buses and you pay half the price that you're supposed to pay to get to any destination. You can also get a train uh, to take you from specific areas to others. Um, we, have no, we have just the blue line. We don't have a red line yet. We're going to have the red line. But now we can go from um, place to place just using our card, our carry card, which is used in BRT and also used on the train to travel. Uh, I said all that. And then I also said there is an app in Lagos State. If you want to go anywhere in Lagos, you just type that app into it, lara.ng, and it tells you, it gives you directions on how to get to wherever you want to get to and whatever means of transportation you want to use. Maybe it's a bus, maybe it's a car, maybe it's a... Um, a keke or any other means of transportation, it will ask you. And then when you say it, it will also give you an estimate of the amount of money that you're supposed to pay. So let's say you're moving from here, from, from VI, to somewhere like Yanokwaja. It will tell you where to get the bus. It will tell you uh, how many buses you may have to take and how much you're going to pay. And then the guy was just laughing at me like, <laughs> These things are not realizable in Nigeria, but hey, it's happening here in Lagos. So while on the one hand we say government, you're not doing enough because we know you can do better, let's also be thankful for the things that we have. So if someone would think that all the things I mentioned can only be obtainable in the UK, 
And we know, the Lagos residents, that it is happening here, or all those things are happening here in Lagos State, then there is something really uh, right about Lagos. But let's, let's all put our hands on deck to make sure that the government sits up, does what it does, but clap for them also when they do what is right. We just hope that the red line will not take more than 16 years again for completion because the blue line took more than that. Uh, the time we were promised the blue line and the red line, uh, it was so many years ago, so, so many years ago. We do hope that it won't take that much uh, longer for that to happen. And especially now that um, uh, houses or accommodation in Lagos is becoming like, you know, landlords have... Uh, uh, gone for uh, a meeting and said that <laughs> nobody will have to succeed in Lagos. You just take your salary and give uh, to landlords to survive. A lot of people stay outside Lagos State and they want to come and work in Lagos State because, hey, it's cheaper to live outside Lagos State and it is, uh, it's cheaper by way of accommodation, by way of feeding and even transportation to, to live outside Lagos State. So if it is also easy to have free roads and free access to good transportation when you enter Lagos from wherever you're coming from, then uh, Lagos will be decongested. Uh, for instance, if we had a working rail line that would come from Ibadan and it's fast enough that it will take you one hour or one hour, 30 minutes to get to Lagos State, a lot of people can live in Ibadan and come to Lagos State. I'm not saying anybody should do that anyway, but if you need to do that, then there should be ways that will make it easy. It is done elsewhere in this world. And nobody in that place that they're doing it has two heads, as we usually say in Nigeria. Well, some things caught our fancy uh, in the course of the last 24 hours or you know, uh, throughout all the time that we have not met. And the first thing is that four Zamfara students were, uh, were, were abducted and now they've been rescued by troops after bandits attack. Four students of the Federal University Gusau, that is Fugus, as we call it, the Zamfara state capital, have been rescued shortly after being kidnapped by bandits. The students were rescued by the troops of Operation Hadarin Daji, who responded timely to a distress call placed by the university authority. The students, according to an eyewitness account, were abducted in their off-campus hostel around 9 p.m. on Saturday in the Sabungari Damba area of Gasau. Remember, we carried that story on our news uh, several times. Residents said the bandits invaded the community a few minutes after 8 p.m. and shot sporadically in order to scare residents. And the spokesperson of uh, one brigade, Nigerian Army Gusau, Captain Yaya Ibrahim, confirmed the students' rescue and said the troops responded swiftly to distress calls about the kidnapping, which led to troops immediately mobilizing and forming a blockade at a possible withdrawal route, which led to a heavy gun duel with the terrorist. According to him, the troops' uh, superiority forced the terrorists to abandon the victims and flee. Yeah, we've heard that, superiority. Uh, but we thank God that these people have been rescued. Uh, he also added that during the encounter with the terrorists around 12 a.m., two of the students were able to escape, while other two students, a male and female, were safely rescued by the troops. Thank God for small messages, like I've been saying today. Uh, well done to the troops that rescued them. Uh, we hope that, that the, the Nigerian army, the police, and all the relevant agencies will be more proactive and forestall things like this from happening. Another thing that we'd like to just look at is that six suspects have been arrested in connection with an attempt to steal train coaches in Medugri, the Borno state capital. I don't know how they would have done that. Maybe they would have uh, enlisted the late Houdini to come and make the do the disappearing act or something or dismantle the coaches. I don't know how they would have done that. But according to the commissioner of police in the state, Yusufu Mohammed, the suspects were arrested after a tip-off from residents of Bayan quarters headquarters of the railway station. According to the CP, a mastermind claiming to be a staff of railway corporation in Boucher State loaded two coaches in a trailer to be transported to Joss, but was halted by police personnel. The suspect allegedly claimed to be working on an agreement signed between the Plateau State Government and the Nigerian Railway Corporation, NRC, on interstate transportation service. But on interrogation, it was discovered that the suspect lied. And the kind, of, the kind of confidence these thieves have, it's, you know, wonderful. The coaches that uh, we're talking about were reportedly headed for Jaws, and six of the arrested suspects 
were already in the custody of the Bernu Command of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, and SCDC, for attempting to transport the coaches out of Bernu. Meanwhile, the NRC, that is the Nigerian Railway Corporation, has said that there was no attempt to steal some of its train coaches in Maiduguri. NRC Managing Director Fidel Okiria made this known in a statement on Saturday. Um, uh, the NRC boss said, contrary to uh, online reports, the coaches in viral videos were being moved to just in Plateau State to be overhauled. So who do we believe now? The security agencies or the NRC boss? Well, I'm sure that stories like this will unfold, you know, in the coming days. And wherever the truth lies, we are going to glean from there and then let you know who was really telling the truth. But we do hope that um, uh, the boss, the NRC boss, was the one telling the truth and there's no fear that these things could be looted. But we've seen uh, times when people go to the real, the train, the, the railway itself the, uh, and remove some things, some, some iron rod, some, some bindings, some things that hold the, the railway together. They just remove them and go to sell. Iron condemn, as we call them. And I don't know if that is stealing or just witchcraft. There are things that happen and you just begin to ask yourself, is that stealing? And if it is stealing, for what purpose is it? Because you're suffering or because you don't care if people die? Well. The NDLEA, that is the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, has detained two wanted drug barons. Uh, they have also intercepted $4.8 million fake currency. Now, these operatives uh, uh, have taken these people into custody. Uh, two wanted heads of transitional criminal organizations with a multi-billion naira worth of illicit drugs. The Anti-Narcotics Agency also seized assets from the traffickers after weeks of intelligence-led operations within and outside the country. Well, um, this was made known on Sunday by the agency's director of media and advocacy, Femi Babafemi, at the headquarters in Abuja. Babafemi stated that the duo who concealed cocaine and heroin in their bellies were arrested after its operatives intercepted consignments designated to Paris, France, and Doha, at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport. I don't know how these people ingest these things. They, they take these wraps, maybe sometimes 200 or 300 wraps of this thing in their bellies. And I'm asking myself, even when I'm eating a bar, how many lumps can I swallow? And people are taking things that um, are not soft enough, but they can take up to 200 inside their bellies. How do they do it? There's magic there that we need to learn. Uh, this, the statement uh, that was given by NDLEA reads in part, and I quote, Operatives at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, MMIA, Ikeja, Lagos, on Tuesday, 10th of October, succeeded in taking into custody Hakim Babatunde Salami, the arrowhead of Tajuddin Babatunde Abioye Transnational Criminal Organization. They even have a name involved in the illicit trade of several narcotics, including cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, and uh, ephedrine between Nigeria, Brazil, Ghana, South Africa, Mozambique, and Europe. And according to Baba Femi, Salami fled Nigeria to South Africa upon the arrest of a member of his syndicate, Suleiman Babatunde Oba, at the Lagos airport on August 25, over an attempt to export 25.10 kilograms of ephedrine to South Africa. He was, however, smoked out of hiding through partnership with South African authorities and other intelligence and investigative units. Some of his luxury vehicles have also been seized and his home in Surulere, Lagos, has been sealed. Baba Femi stated further that in, he claimed he was into importation So the man claimed that he was into importation of building materials from China to Nigeria and used to sell gold in South Africa before delving into the illicit drug trade about two years ago. The head of another cartel, Okafor Ikechuku Williams, also known as Jan Tu, and his wife, Okafor Ifenyiwa Grace, were also taken into custody on Thursday, 5th of October, when NDLEA operatives raided 
their hideout at 9 Awa Street, Ago Palace of Kota area of Lagos, where they recovered 27.566 kilograms of meta methamphetamine concealed in a blue box and two sacks ready for export to Europe and Asia. What a family business. Ngofo Ejogu Charles, 45, was also arrested at the Abuja Airport by operatives on Friday, 6th of October, during the outward clearance of Qatar Airways flight QR1432 to Doha after a body scan revealed he ingested cocaine. He was placed under observation during which he excreted 75 pellets of cocaine weighing 1.653 kilograms. I bet you just do this assignment when you're taking a bar. Count the number of lumps that you take. And you will respect these people uh, that will take 75 or more into their bellies. At the point of his arrest, Wafo, who was the last passenger on board his flight, offered to compromise an NDLEA officer with $3,000 to free him. And the fact that we have heard this story means that the NDLEA officer did not collect that money. And so we applaud that officer for doing the right thing. Those are the people that we should be recognizing as patriotic Nigerians who, in spite of all odds, still maintain their principles and do their work well and will not take bribe. $3,000, if you convert that to Naira now, that Naira is like 1,050 Naira to a dollar, you know what kind of money he would have made for something that a lot of people will say, you know, concern me, that's the word that we use. But we applaud that officer and all the other officers who do not compromise their principles just because of uh, uh, gains, they, they now gains, as I would call them, gains that you think um, will do you so a lot of good when you do not know that in, in the long run, maybe you are also going to pay dearly for uh, that negligence, that compromise that you have given yourself into. Well, Nigeria will be good, and we all will have to contribute. Those were the stories that we needed to look at right now before we enter uh, into the discussion of our hot topics. But right now, we're going to take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers, what made it to the front pages of some of our newspapers, and after that, we'll go to our hot topics. Stay with us.